Hey guys, Legendary Grimlock here, and today I have the request for Scarlet King vs. Darkseid. Without further ado, let's begin. And due to Darkseid's current retcon of him once being a farmer named Uxus and becoming the Lord of Apocalypse after killing dead gods and absorbing their power, Darkseid, well, was born. Darkseid is one of the most powerful beings in the DC Universe, or the DC Multiverse in general, to the point where he's taken on the Justice League, the Justice League of Earth 2, the Justice Society, and has absolutely ragdolled them, alright? He's been able to take attacks from Doomsday, been able to fight and stalemate the anti monitor and even absorb the old gods like Zeus. So Darkseid is easily one of the strongest and one of the stronger beings in DC. However, his current boost in power elevates him to such a level some can only dream of. He has not only been able to basically one-shot the Quintessence, but kill them all. To the point where he was able to even somewhat fight on par with the Empty Hand. Who is really one of the most powerful cosmic beings here. But with that being said here, Darkseid actually has a variable amount of hacks. It's able to create these spikes that were used to, you know, um, pretty much just kill the uh, empty hand here. He's able to use his Omega Beams as usual, but however, he has different applications. He can freeze people in time, eradicate them from existence, or just simply produce regular blasts meant to just pierce and kill. So, uh, yeah, these are absolutely ridiculous in power. And these Omega Beings are so strong that they've not only been able to knock back Black Adam, but have been able to even sear and burn the Empty Hand. However, Darkseid, during the Dark Crisis run, or at least until the Dark Crisis, you know, kind of, I guess you could say went underway from Death of Justice League to further on, he was actually weakened, mentally nerfed to the point where Teen Titans or even inexperienced superheroes like John Kent and even, you know, characters like Raven and Starfire were able to fight against him and his fellow members of the pretty much the Dark Army. And he would actually be the second strongest in this group above the upside down man who was affecting the multiverse above Eclipso, who pretty much can clown the specter and above Necron, who's been able to banish the Anti-Monitor, alright? Easily should have inaccessible to immeasurable levels of combat and reaction speed due to him being able to, well, react to characters like Superman, well, to Superman, actually, and being able to easily react to characters and even blitz characters like Black Adam. His Omega Beams will also be faster than him as well. So, you, again, you have the inaccessible speeds to, again, marginally, like, you know, just inaccessible to massively faster than light is what I mean here. However, there is some context to the feats we use here. For starters, this is not the Crisis on Infinite Earths anti monitor we're talking about. This is a regular, regular anti monitor. Basically, him without the crisis on infinite earth however the anti-monitor will still be multiversal as he's been able to kill and destroy countless universes he would also scale above barbados and this is pretty important because barbados was responsible for dark the first dark knight's medal and this would put him in a significantly powerful tier as the simple you know screams of barbados were just pretty much shaking realities all right He's even been able to capture Mandrake, who's been able to manipulate the bleed, which is basically a single drop of it is the, well, the equivalent of in creating an entire universe, an entirely different reality. He should also be above the Darkest Night and Final Crisis Wonder Woman, who merged DC, sorry, merged New 52, Rebirth, and Post Crisis, and I think Pre Crisis as well, all together. All right? So, this will put Darkseid in an area where he should be able to beat Perpetua at this point. Simply because his power level has elevated and he's been able to one-shot the Quintessence. But, you could actually say he's on par with a full power Perpetua. Due to the sheer fact that the Quintessence was afraid of him. So, in all honesty, yeah, you could honestly say Darkseid is a powerhouse. Him being able to react to characters like Superman, him being able to defeat the Justice League on countless occasions, 
including powerhouses like Wonder Woman, who's actually been able to draw blood from the Phantom Stranger. You even have characters that have been affected, character, you know, again, you still have the other scaling as well, like Upside Down Man, Eclipse, so Ares, who each have done something multiversal plus, and this dark side, oh, excuse me, and this dark side is easy above countless characters. I would even put him above the World Forger, who would absolutely pimp slap um, Mitso Piddling, all right? But without further ado, I think that really does wrap, out, wrap up our dark side section. So let's get into his opponent. And then the reason why this video is probably one of my shorter versus battles for this exact reason, the Scarlet. Now, this is incredible. The Scarlet King is one of the, I think, first few entities to exist in the SCP verse. He, he can't even be resurrected. Okay, this guy is just so powerful that him waking up shook the tree of knowledge. Now, what is the tree of knowledge? The tree of knowledge is basically, you could honestly say it's creation itself, or you could honestly say that it's the foundation of the multiverse. This multiverse contains narratives, planes, conceptual planes. So things like hope, things like hope, willpower, reality, essence, spirit, all exist in here. You even have cosmic waves, you know, conce these conceptual entities as well. And he was able to threaten beings that serve the Almighty, who is in, who's basically omnipotence itself. Okay? So he's threatening literal omnipotence. I would also count that as omnipresence as well, because omnipotence kind of goes in with the omnipresence of you know, speed, dimensionality, and the Almighty is able to exist in so many planes, including things like the narratives, and, well, narratives basically like he basically exists within the plot, and the Scarlet King literally not only being um, waking up, but with just the sheer amount of power it would take to resurrect him would be astronomically just too much and would shake and maybe even fracture the tree of life speaking of which in a battle with hevel he was able to tank a flood that flooded all of creation and he survived this casual like it, it, it just just nothing wrong with this bro just saying yep um that was a horrible flood but uh i'm fine right so he's able to survive a flood that was flooding dimensions and even narratives themselves here and again you're gonna see why this video is so short for the reason you have the tran it's basically transfinite multiverses now not multiverse multiverses you hear what i mean multiverses meaning more than one multiverse and it's transfinite or if you really just want to basically let me simplify it, it means you have a sub amount of infinite multiverses that the Scarlet King is able to simply just threaten, you know? There's nothing that this, it's nothing out of his reach here. And he was able to kill Hakuna and the serpent who served the Almighty, all right? Now, I hope I did, I did do my research and I hope I kind of, you know, simplify this here. But let's really talk about this and why, um, yeah, this match is going to be quick. So to start off with the anti-modders retcon, we all know that in New 52, a lot of things change, and this included the anti-monitor. Cole, i.e., or Crisis on Infinite Earths anti-monitor, um, is basically a combination of Warforger, the Overmonitor, and the Anti-Monitor together, but corrupted by Perpetua, okay? That's basically what happens here. Plus, the sheer fact that Darkseid doesn't scale to empty hand. If he did, this match probably would have been a lot longer, especially with the scaling of the empty hand here being, a, being that can threaten the narrator itself. Or basically the reader or the narrator, whichever one you guys would say. Let's just say both for pretty much just fun sake, right? But the Scarlet King himself is just so monstrously powerful. It's just, it's bad, all right? 
And it's kind of like the Rayquaza versus Bezo Bufo video, but worse, all right? And here's the reason why. It's basically like Darkseid is at the Outerversal tier, yes. But the Scarlet King is in that tier. You're at it. You're there at, basically, you're there at the building, but the person you want is in the building. You know, he's already in it. Yes, you got there, but he's in that tier. And he has so many layers into that tier that you're not going to be able to beat him. For example, let, let's give this a good example. Unicron versus Galactus. All right, this is basically what this match is representing. Galactus is powerful. Yes, an universal entity. But Unicron embodies that. And it's the same thing here. The Scarlet King embodies this category. He's basically just going to hold... Um, it's like he, he just holds out his hand, grabs Darkseid, and Darkseid can just try to destroy his fingernails, and it wouldn't work. The Scarlet King is just an absolute monster. He, he, I, why? Just G, y'all did dark. Y'all just did dark side dirty on this one. But I love y'all requests though. This was actually a pretty good research for me. But anyway, let me know what you guys think down below. Do you think Dark Side has a chance, or do you think the Scarlet King flicks and then uses him as toilet paper later on? But yeah, that's gonna be all for today. Peace.